When I was 19, I started throwing parties in college. I wasn't even old enough to go to the bar, but I got a contract with the top bar in the town for my parties. Back then when I was 19, I didn't know that this was going to be the thing that gave me the entrepreneurial bug to eventually build a tech company. We decided to go to Saster San Mateo last year, but at the time we were bootstrapped. We did not have venture capital, but we wanted to make a splash and we couldn't afford a sponsorship and we knew we couldn't afford to compete with other companies for the prime time hours. So instead we looked at the calendar and we thought, where's their white space? And for us, it was after 9 p.m. And we thought our users are the SDRs, they're the AEs, they're being sent across the country in some cases to attend this conference and they're gonna want something to do. We decided to throw a rave and it came together at the last minute. We advertised that we were doing it at a secret location. We started building some hype, but honestly, we didn't have a venue yet. So I dropped off my co-founder, Casey, our CTO in downtown San Mateo and just said, walk around and find a place to throw a party. And we found an Irish pub. And it makes no sense to throw a rave in an Irish pub, but it worked out perfectly because it was so absurd. We had clowns on stilts, there's a taco truck outside, we had visual performers, we had a body painter, we had a live artist, and we had two DJs packed into this little Irish pub with around 350 people that had came to the event, line out the door. After throwing our party in San Mateo, just everything changed. We had new customers, new users, and most importantly, we raised our Series A just weeks after it happened because of the momentum that was built by throwing this party. And that's when we knew lavender events cannot be missed and we should keep doing them. We knew when we were going to SAS Europa that we had to throw a party that maintains the lavender DNA, the lavender aesthetic, the surprise and delight parts of the party that people just didn't really expect. So what I envisioned was one part cultural moment at the Van Gogh exhibit and one part dance party at the Salvador Dali exhibit. They first walked in and were surrounded by the Van Gogh art and learning about this legendary artist, being immersed in the immersive room as well as a VR exhibit, and then walking to the Dali exhibit where they're again immersed in the art, but in a whole different way where the Van Gogh exhibit was serene and educational. The Dali exhibit really visualized his art with the backing of music. It felt like you're at a dance party, like you're at a club. So these two types of events were juxtaposed against each other to give people both this cultural experience as well as this fun experience together into one event that had never been done before. And since they're closing the Dali exhibit, can never be done again. As with all great parties, this was not without complications. So normally when you go into the Dali exhibit, you enter in a different part of the building. But because our group was so big, they thought it might be a fire hazard. So we went in the back door, which completely threw off the entire logistics of how you would enter the party. It caused some congestion getting to the bar. It made it so it wasn't obvious how you got back to the dance floor. You could hear the music, but you weren't quite sure where it was. But our team adapted. They instantly found solutions on how to get the people to the right parts of the party. Except for one thing, at the end of the party, we had $10,000 in t-shirts that we wanted to give away. The t-shirt table was in the complete opposite end of the venue and no one saw them as they were exiting. So the next morning we wake up and we're in our team WhatsApp group thinking, we've got tons of t-shirts we have to give away. We can't take them back to the US, what do we do? And in true lavender fashion, we decided, let's throw another party. So we rented out the pizza place directly across from the conference. One of our engineers found a Caribbean steel drummer who was playing on the side of the road and hired him for the day. It became a whole vibe. Again, hundreds of people from Saster came to our impromptu happy hour at the pizza place across the street, had great food, great drinks, great conversation, and most importantly, they left with a limited edition, one of a kind lavender t-shirt. People are still talking about the Saster Europa party, just as they're still talking about the Saster San Mateo party. When we're thinking about Saster San Mateo 2023, it's all about how do we build that experience again that people aren't expecting from a B2B SaaS company. A party that they want to put on their story, they want to tell their friends about, and they want to talk about months and months later. And that brings us to this event, and we sincerely hope that everyone that came last year comes again, brings their friends, and exposes new people to why people say that you never miss a lavender party.